Welcome to the Muxall Open IoT channel. I am your host, Michael Crane. In this video, I guess what I'm trying to do in this video is, is one of the questions came up was, <laughs> what do I need uh, to buy if, you know, if I want this pellet hopper video? A pellet hopper vibrator. And this wire right here, this is a ground wire that you should hook up to your your ground. And all of them have a ground. Uh, they're usually green, the green wires. Um, but it's to ground the case on this. And this, to recap, if you want a pellet hopper vibrator to use with an OEM controller, right, you have to buy a Y cable. To recap on that, if you have a Muxall Pro barbecue controller, you need a pellet hopper vibrator and this upgrade wire. Okay? So to recap, if you want me to do this, have me do the upgrade, you buy the upgrade option and I'll send you a shipping label to box to uh, send me the controller. I'll upgrade it and send it back to you and it only takes I don't know, 20 minutes to do it. <laughs> and then I'll send it back to you. Okay, so when you buy the kit, you get the pellet hopper vibrator, and um, I'll probably include a wire nut in here. It's not in this video, but I'll, I'll, I'll include a wire nut for you. And, uh, and then you have a connector, right? And you have the two pins that go inside the connector. And then you have the magnets and some washers and stuff that you put on the, the base right here. And you go, okay, well, that's, that's simple enough. Um, these, are, these connectors right here are actually crimp connectors. Uh, I solder them in place just to... Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. I solder them to make sure that they hold better. It's not necessary, but I, I do it because I've had too many of these crimp connectors fall off. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I solder mine on. But another thing you have to do with the kit is you have to pull the ends, both ends, off these things and, and adjust the, the, the weights inside there. And uh, so you have to take an Allen wrench. There's four screws. I believe, I don't know if I adjusted this one or not, probably not. And you have to do this, because if you don't do this, they come default as uh, at 100% um, vibration. And I'm telling you, you can't hang on to this thing at 100% vibra <laughs> vibration. I mean, it will, yeah, it, it's, it's designed to... Um, for a concrete sift shaker and I guarantee it's you, you're not going to hold on to this thing and plus the magnets it'll jump off the grill lickety split so uh, you need to make sure you adjust this this is a must this is an option all right so um, oh, let me pause this I'll be right back okay I pulled the four screws out of this side and this thing pops off and this little o-ring goes flying and uh, that O-ring actually goes uh, right around here. It also, it has instructions that come with it. Well, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that O-ring goes around here. This thing is waterproof. Um, it's IP65 rated, I do believe. And, um, yeah, so when you go to put this back on, I usually put a little bit of Vaseline around here to kind of let it, kind of let it push on a little easier. Uh, but yeah, you can see, so this one hasn't been adjusted. You can see these weights right here are all on one side. <laughs> I guarantee you, um, yeah, you, you won't be able to hang on to it, let me tell you. And, and these magnets won't hold it either. It will jump off the grill and bounce all over the floor. It'll be really bad. So you have to adjust this. And the way to adjust it, I guess, 
kind of show you real quick, maybe, is, um, and you have to do it to both sides, and you have to do them, um, ah, I probably needed a little bigger wrench than this thing, um, let's see if I can get this thing loose, ah, but you need to put another wrench on both sides and and kind of loosen it up. But um, uh, or let me see, maybe I can put it on something here. Yeah, this is kind of a pain. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, you might be saving you a little bit of money and labor. But this is kind of a pain for just getting these things loose. Ah, ah. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll have to pull the other side off and, well, let me do that. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, so I have both sides off. And when you adjust these things, you have to make sure they're even. Even being, um, you see how they're, you know, they're flat on both sides right here. So if I move this to 2.5 this needs to be set exactly the same it says it needs instructions right here when you, when you get them and uh, so let's see if we can get this guy off of here now there goes the other o-ring and yeah I probably should use proper wrenches for this I couldn't be bothered trying to go find them golly <laughs> this one is on very tight. <laughs> yeah, um, I haven't seen them that tight before. Anyway, I'm gonna have to go get a couple proper wrenches to put on this thing, and uh, so I don't kind of kind of buggered that one up a little bit. So anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, I had to take <laughs> I'd take it out in the shop and get a couple there there are ten millimeter nuts on here. I got a couple ten millimeter uh, uh, box wrenches here and kind of threw them on there and got got one side loose and I had to kind of hold it in in the in a vise on the other side to get the other side loose. But I got them both both sides loose. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you that. I think it's fifty-six dollars in labor I charged to do this, and uh, yeah, that's probably too cheap. Anyway, um, so <laughs> after you uh, cuss a little bit and and get those two ends off, uh, you can get on the instructions right here, and uh, let's see. Here we go. And you can kind of set the uh, eccentricity <laughs> of it. But anyway, 2.5% is a uh, zero degree angle. So basically what you do is you take, there's four weights on each. There's four of these weights, as you can see. Uh, one, two, hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, and then I'm going to flip this guy over, three. Whoop. Maybe three. Oh, I'm get on there. Yeah, I'll tell you. This one's uh this this one's a bit different than the uh, when I when I order these things, I get them all off Amazon, but they source them from different companies, and uh, this one's. This one's a bit, how you doing? I'm telling you. So this thing's actually keyed right here. And you can kind of see, so the two on the bottom are actually not keyed. And the two on the top are keyed. So you can't rotate the two on the top, which makes absolutely zero sense. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, 
Anyway, so I'm going to put the keyed ones on the bottom. I'm going to put the non-keyed ones on the top. Yeah, maybe. If I can get it on there. Man, I'll tell you, these are... The first couple I bought were much better. I might have to look at the sellers and, and see um, what's going on with this. Because maybe there's some bad sellers and good sellers, but... Uh, I mean, they all look identical. I'm guessing one company makes them and 40 different people will sell them, but maybe you have to assemble them and... and uh, so yeah, I'm not really sure. Anyway, <laughs> long story short. Uh, so... 0% is basically just flipping them over like that. I, or I'm sorry, yeah, not 0%, 0 degree angle. Uh, they had this thing on there. It doesn't even fit. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, hmm. These guys are freaking me out here. Uh, I, I don't remember my other one having this washer on there. I don't think it's really needed. Uh, maybe it's because they put it together wrong to begin with. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but, you know, so, yeah, because so if you think about it, uh, so this thing has got little knurls on the bottom of it to keep it from unscrewing, right? And if you put this washer on there, that pretty much negates the whole thing, so you don't want that on there. Um, I'm guessing they couldn't get it tight or something. Who knows what's going on with these people. Anyway, um, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to screw it on there the way I think it should be done. And tighten it up. Yeah, you might have to um, put this and get some channel locks out like this. You know, uh, be very careful not to damage them. But you know, damage the weights or anything. Uh, kind of hold it like that, tighten it up. All right, and if you need, you know, if you have a problem, if it keeps unscrewing or something like that, you can use um, Loctite. And I don't have any laying around right now, I'd show you. But just put a little Loctite on there and then tighten it down. You don't need to uh, be the incredible Hulk tightening these things down like they were, because that's just pointless. And um, I, I ran mine without any problems. So, uh, and I didn't use any Loctite. And I've ran it, I don't know, 20 hours so far, maybe something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. I'm going to toss that washer. Yeah, these things are like put together wrong. Um, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to take this apart and flip those around like I showed you. Um, man. Yeah, not, not too sure what's gigging here. Huh? Oh, be real careful not to damage these, or bend them, I mean. I'm trying to be very careful. Yeah, this is this is actually pretty good. This will sell my <laughs> people will say, "Oh, geez, I don't want to mess with that," and pay for them. I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Ah, I don't know if I want to do this. Man, what a pain! Anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna to pull all these off. I'm gonna put the the keyed ones. Uh, on the bottom, put the non-keyed ones on the top so we can adjust it, and, uh, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, <laughs> I went ahead and put it back together, and so you can see that both sides are now even, All right? The uh, set of two. Oh, this one actually got turned a little bit. Actually, that's kind of good that did that. Oh, actually, they both got turned a little bit. All right. So, uh, let's see, there's a gap at the top. Um, I don't know. Yeah, you'll have to tinker with it a little bit. It says in the instructions to make sure they're even. I'm not sure this little gap would make too much of a difference. Um, but it says, you know, like if you... It's got these little knots right here. And, um, or... I don't know what to call them, the, the, 
little, little pins, I guess, sticking out. And so you can kind of unloosen this and move it over to one pin. And that'll, that'll increase its, its uh, aggressiveness on vibrating depending on how you move it. So, and it doesn't really say right here. It's just says 0, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135, 180. Um, <laughs> I use 0 because it's the quietest. And, um, well, it's the quietest. And, and it works. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I think if you get... Anywhere above 45 degrees at 38%, it's going to be too noisy. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's going to be way too aggressive. It's going to start shaking your grill off the porch. So, <laughs> yeah, so then you just, uh, then I take some, some Vaseline and kind of put it around this, this O-ring a little bit. And you pop this guy back on, right? You put the screws in there, you do it to both sides, and you're done. So um, that's about it. And as far as mounting the feet go, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you just uh, take off the, uh, <laughs> the, you just put the, the feet on the bottom like this, and then there's two washers that come with it, and this might change in the future, um, depending on if I can find a, a better screw that will fit flush in this neodymium magnet. Um, and, uh, and, you know, something maybe a little bigger, or maybe better washers, a better fender washer. And this is a lock nut on here, so you just kind of put that on there and uh, tighten it down. I'm not going to bore you with that. Anyway, just put a screwdriver here, tighten this down, put all four feet on it, and uh, you're done. And I've done a video on making Molex connectors, but as far as testing goes, that's going to be kind of hard. Um, if, unless you just kind of hook it up to your, your grill. So uh, that's probably going to be the best way is connect it to your grill. Make sure to unplug it. Connect it to your grill. And... Um, and then run it. The Muxall Pro is going to have a manual override, kind of like the auger and fan. You can turn it on and off and uh, tinker with it. And then you'll have to, um, when I was testing it, I left the caps off so I could, you know, take the motor off and adjust the weights to where I liked it. And then when you're done, you can just put it all back together and, and that's it. That's using, that's, my, that's getting the kit. Uh, and I, I forget what the kit is. It's like, um, I forget exactly what it is. Maybe I can put it in the video. Um, but anyway, it, I, th I think with labor and everything, it comes to like 70 bucks or something like that, 75 bucks. Uh, like I said, I might need to up that a little <laughs> but th This one was kind of a pain. Uh, if you use a bill of materials and buy all this stuff yourself off of uh, Amazon, you can save yourself the shipping and the labor, um, but then you'll have to source all the screws and you know go to Lowe's and tinker with it and, and stuff. So that, that's why I'm selling this as a kit, just to save everyone some time. Don't forget, you can support the Muxall Open IoT channel by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up, that helps, and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.